Hello calculus kids, this is Mr. Bean and in today's lesson we're going to talk about horizontal asymptotes and how they relate to limits. Now to start us off we got to make sure we remember stuff about horizontal asymptotes so just as a brief reminder usually what we talk about a horizontal asymptote it is referring to the end behavior of a graph. So if I have this an imaginary horizontal line this would represent a horizontal asymptote if the graph, if I drew some type of graph that eventually would be approaching where this line is, like that. That would be considered a horizontal asymptote. Now, unlike vertical asymptotes, a graph might cross it. It's okay if a graph crosses a horizontal asymptote. So this is an example of something that would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And as you get it across here, it might be crossing infinite number of times. But eventually, the y value gets closer and closer to this horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's a horizontal asymptote, as opposed to, if you remember, a vertical asymptote, if we had a straight up and down line, a graph can't cross that. So if you were to draw a graph, it would, once it goes towards that, it would either be pushed up or pushed down, and it can't cross it. Horizontal asymptotes, they can cross. All right, so what that means is that we're going to be looking at limits as x approaches infinity. So as x goes off to infinity, that is describing a horizontal asymptote, or if we said the limit as x approaches negative infinity. That would be talking about the left side if there is a horizontal asymptote and a y value that it approaches. All right, so let's jump into it for today. Basic rules. Hopefully you know this already, but if you don't, then this will give you a kind of a better understanding, I hope. If you have a denominator that is growing faster, that means you have a situation in which you have a number that's big on top, but not as big as the number on bottom. The number on bottom is really, really big. So if you divide by extremely large numbers on bottom, you're going to basically get zero. So if the denominator is growing faster than the numerator, you get zero. If the numerator and denominator grow at the exact same rate, equally fast, then you have two large numbers on top and bottom, which is going to just cancel each other out and you get the number one. And then if the numerator is going to grow faster than the denominator, so your big numbers on top as opposed to a number not quite as big, then you're approaching infinity. You don't have a horizontal asymptote just because it's going larger and larger and larger. So there's no specific y value that the graph is going to approach. Okay, so make sure you have these rules down and now let's apply them. Here you've got this big chart, a whole bunch of different numbers. I have put down functions for you and filled out all the numbers so you don't have to waste time filling all that in. And I wanted to point out here that as we start off, which one of these is the largest number? If x equals 1 and we plug in a 1, okay, that one's the largest. On the next one, if we plug in a 10, which one's the largest? This one is the largest in this case. 10 to the 10th power is larger than any of these. And then as you go on to the 100, let's see here, uh, this is still large, but it's not as large as this one. This one's larger. This one's larger. This one is the largest because it's to the 60th power, 10 to the 60th. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that at the very beginning, you might have a graphs that are larger than others, but we're talking about x approaching infinity. A thousand is not even anywhere really that big if you think about infinity. So we're talking about extremely large numbers. So what I want you to do then is, I'm going to show you the answer here, but if you could rank them fastest to slowest, which one's growing the fastest? The 4 to the x is the fastest. So exponential functions, the ones that I'm circling here, those are all exponential. Those grow the fastest. That's why they ranked 1, 2, and 3. Uh, because exponential graphs, I mean, that's why they're called exponential. Their exponential growth is really fast. And then you'll have these power functions, uh, like polynomial functions, and then logarithms. Logarithms do not grow nearly as fast. In fact, you can see here it goes really slow. Logarithms kind of flatten out a curve a bit. Okay, so that's important for when we look at numerators and denominators to know which ones are growing faster. So if you don't have that down, write it down, pause it. I'm going to move on. So this first one, let's find horizontal asymptotes. So to find a horizontal asymptote, uh, we're going to look at which one's growing faster, the numerator or denominator. In this case, the numerator is. So if we remember, if the numerator grows faster, we actually do not have a horizontal asymptote. It's just approaching infinity. So I'm going to abbreviate this and just say that there are no, there is no horizontal asymptote by writing that. All right, number five. This is x to the first power. This is x to the first power. They're growing at the same rate. Therefore, if they're growing at the same rate, you have just the coefficients, or in other words, just whatever's in front right here. So in this case, it's going to be the horizontal asymptote is y equals one third. There's a little one in front here and a three. See, nothing else matters. All this re rest of this stuff is just blah, 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 blah. If I had x cubed, 
minus 3x squared plus 7x. And down here I had 5x cubed plus 6x minus 10. None of this other stuff matters. I can just ignore all that. The only thing that matters is the terms that are growing the fastest, and you compare those. So in this case, the horizontal asymptote would be y equals 1 fifth, because it's a 1 on top and a 5 on bottom. All right, number 6. We have, uh, we have a x on top and an x squared, so the denominator is growing faster. If the denominator is growing faster, then we have a situation where it is y equals 0. This one, we have to actually multiply it down a little bit, but you only care about the term that's growing the fastest, kind of like what I did down here. I crossed down all the rest. So let's look at this numerator. When I do x times x, I'm going to have x squared plus blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. The rest of this stuff doesn't matter. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have, when this is quantity squared, so if I multiply down, I'm going to get a 16x squared plus a bunch of other blah, blah, blah that doesn't matter. I only care about the terms with the largest degrees. And now that helps me know right away I'm going to have y equals, there's a 1 in front of this, so it's y equals 1 16th, since it's an x squared right there and an x squared right there. They're growing at the same rate. Now so far I've only had to check as x is approaching infinity because I just, I've only done this, x approaching infinity for all of these examples, because x approaching negative infinity would give me the same answers for each of these. You'd get the same thing. But now here's some examples in which this numbers 8 and 9, you don't get the same answers if you approach positive infinity versus negative infinity. So let's start off with x is going to approach infinity. Okay. So for this one, remember how you only care about the largest terms, so none of this stuff matters, blah, 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 blah. So what is the square root of 4x squared? That's basically 2x, if you simplify it. So you have 2x over 3x, so therefore my horizontal asymptote is y equals 2 thirds. What about if I have x approach negative infinity? Let's see if I get a different answer. So for this one, if I plug in a negative infinity here, I'm going to get a negative. If you plug it in, this is, this is where kids get lost. Listen carefully. You don't plug a negative infinity into the simplified version of your numerator or your denominator. Just don't do it to the simplified of the radical. You have to think about plugging it into the original. So if I plug in a negative super big number and then square it, it makes it positive then I take the square root. So it's basically saying, yes, it's like saying x to the first power, whatever it is, but it's always positive because you're squaring it first. Squaring it makes a negative number become positive. Then you take the square root, it's still positive. So what happens is you're going to have, for this number eight example, you're going to have a positive number on top, but a negative number on bottom because this one's x to the first power. So that's going to leave you with positive 2x and on bottom a negative 3x. So this one means if you go x approaches negative infinity, you get a negative 2 thirds. So there's actually two different asymptotes to this. There's on the right side a 2 thirds asymptote and on the left side a negative 2 thirds asymptote. Okay, let's do this again. So we're going to have x approach infinity. Uh, and remember here, this whole thing right here, 4x to the fourth, is going to simplify to 2x to the second power. And uh, so then as x approaches infinity, 2 over 3, x squared, x squared is the same, so I just have 2 thirds, so y equals 2 thirds again. Now let's check x approaching negative infinity. So this is where you have to plug it into the original. So you have x to the fourth power, x to the second power. Both of these are going to become positive, positive on the numerator, positive in the denominator. It doesn't give you a negative answer because you get a positive over a positive. So this one doesn't have a second answer, so it's just that right there, y equals 2 thirds. All right, now let's do the limit. Now remember, if we say the limit as x approaches infinity, that is exactly the same as just saying what's the end behavior or what's the horizontal asymptote. It all means the same thing. Horizontal asymptote, end behavior, x approaching infinity. They're all equivalent. All right, so let's see, what is this? This is going to be a negative 4 e raised, now think about this fraction, e raised to the 1 over x, or 1 over infinity. That's basically 0. 1 over infinity is saying 0. 
it's approaching zero. So e to the zero is one, so negative four times one is just negative four. Uh, let's do this one here. We have five e, uh, oh, let's change this, hold on. The negative is gonna make this become one over e to the x. So then that's five times one over e to the infinity. Well, that's just five times zero, because one over super big number. So then the answer to that is just zero. Okay, last bit of problems. Now here, this first example, I want to make sure I point out the difference between what I have written on number 12 and this. So if I have sine x over x, and I'm doing the limit as x approaches zero, zero, that equals one. Remember, that's for earlier in this year where we did some lessons on special trig values, trig limits. Sine x over x equals one, only if x is approaching zero. Notice this is having x approach infinity, well, negative infinity. Do not get this confused. Over half of you will miss this on the test at the end of the unit because some will have x approaching zero, some will have x approaching infinity. You have to understand the difference. So in this case, sine x on top, this is just a sine wave. You're gonna bounce back and forth, back and forth between positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one. But if x is approaching negative infinity, you have a really big number on top and a number, or excuse me, a really big number on bottom and the number on top is just bouncing back and forth between negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one. So you have a pretty small number on top, really big number on bottom, the limit is zero. Here, you're going to uh, treat the fraction first, so we're gonna have this negative three, and then cosine of one over infinity. One over infinity is basically zero. So then you have cosine of zero, so negative three, to cosine of zero is just one, so the answer to this is negative three. All right, now the last two are pretty much the same problem, same type of problem. Sine x, remember sine x is just this wave, bounces back and forth, back and forth. As x approaches infinity, does the wave do anything different? Does it slow down? Does it, does it scrunch up and become a specific number? No, it just bounces back and forth, back and forth. So there is no limit because, so we say does not exist. The limit does not exist because this thing is oscillating oscillating. You don't have to write that out. I'm just writing it to remind you. So it does not exist because the limit is bouncing back and forth and never gets closer and closer to a specific y value. It's just bouncing around between one and negative one. So number 15, it's actually the same type of idea. Let me erase this. Cosine x is still a, a wave that's bouncing back and forth, but then you have this 5x. So it's like a wave that starts off like this and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it just keeps getting bigger waves. So again, it does not exist because it is oscillating. So there's no limit for this one. Okay, so that is our horizontal asymptotes with involving infinity. Hopefully you're able to put that all together and it makes sense to you. And we're gonna have some really good test prep problems in this packet. So pay attention to those, make sure you know how to do those. All right, rock that mastery check. I'll see you back for one more lesson in unit one.